G'day! In this section, I'm going to overview some basic appearances of quadratics in nature. We've already seen from way at the beginning that Galileo's projectiles are really quadratic motion. That was application number one just to motivate the whole quadratic program that I've got going here. But actually quadratics appear in all sorts of strange places in nature. And while I'm talking, I'm going to do something strange. I've put a dot on a piece of paper. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the bottom edge of that paper up to the dot and make a crease mark. That's one fold. And I'm going to do it again at a different angle. Do, 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 do. So that I can't do it while I'm uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not doing a very good job here. Folding up at a different angle, see the bottom edge is touching the dot. And uh, I can't do this facing you apparently, but I'll, oh, that's not, pretty, that's not too bad. I'm going to keep making creases. I'm going to do this 50 times while I'm chatting, but I have to do it like so I can see myself because I can't hold the paper otherwise. So I'm going to keep bringing the bottom edge up to that dot at different angles. Anyhow, why am I doing this? I'll explain in a moment. But uh, Quadratics appear not only in projectile motion, but actually the Greeks, ancient Greeks noticed if you took a light cone, like if you took a lamp against a wall, not that they had electricity back then, but the lamp shade against the wall often makes it like a, a, a shape of a, of a, a U-shaped curve. And under special circumstances, that U-shaped curve is actually quadratic. Those Greeks were very aware that actually if you take any cone shape, like a, I know, an ice cream cone, I should have shared my marker here. That's silly, this is not a very good lecture. Um, and slice it in different ways. One of the shapes that appears turns out to be a perfect quadratic. Um, you'll see a lot of books call these conic sections. It's because the word cone got sliced. They call a, call a quadratic an example of a conic section. Actually, they use the word parabola. Uh, that's the name the Greeks came up with when they did conic sections. And it turns out that parabolas are indeed quadratic. So actually, the two words are the same. But you know, Algebra 2 courses tend not to prove that, uh, at least not in, in, as, as a first experience in the course. Yet they use the two words synonymously in the case, which is kind of bad. Anyhow, you're watching me do this. Uh, the Greeks noticed that quadratics appear in all sorts of other strange geometric ways. But here's a lovely way they appear. Bingo, here's the result of all my folding. I kept folding this bottom edge up to that dot at different angles. And you notice as you do that, I need a marker, that it seems to trace out, if you did like literally about, literally like a hundred of these things, you get the crease marks seem to trace out a lovely U-shaped curve. And of course the question is, as we've seen from Galileo's day, not every U-shaped curve is actually a quadratic formula. So is this one a quadratic formula or not? So in this section, we'll talk about line cones. We'll just revisit projectiles a little bit because I should mention them. Uh, we'll talk about paper folding, see if this is quadratic or not. And we'll talk about um, other appearances of quadratics in basic geometric instructions. Basically, all the extra stuff that should be in Algebra 2 class and isn't. And the reason it isn't because actually sometimes the math just gets a little bit hairy in places, as you will see if you want to work through this material. Most of it's really accessible, so there's just a couple of, couple of nasty spots. All right, but if you work through it patiently and slowly, it'll all make sense. Enjoy this section. Is that a problem? Cool. Cool question. All right. Thanks so much.